Um, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Radiva Aslam here with you. Uh, I'm working as an assistant professor at University of Lahore's Economics Department. And today we have a very special webinar in store for you uh, where we will be um, looking into the fascinating world of inclusive finance and uh, gender equality. And this webinar uh, is being held from the platform of the University of Lahore. So let me tell you a little bit about my university where I'm working. And uh, then we will be introducing our special guest in front of you. Uh, University of Lahore uh, is an institution that is one of the biggest private institution, not only in Pakistan, but also in South Asia. So if I just give you some quick facts and figures about it, we have around 35,000 student body with us, 2,000 plus academic faculty. And uh, we have like around 200 plus degree programs with us, 40 plus academic departments, 11 faculties, five research centers, and three technology uh, parts. So this university is basically focusing in different areas. One of the area in which I am uh, working is on um, un un under the economics department that is uh, gender economics. So this topic is very close to my expertise. Um, joining us today is our distinguished expert, uh, Ms. Nawal Alal, who brings over a decade of experience in international cooperation, gender equality, and economic empowerment. So if I be a little bit short, I can say that she's inclusive finance and women economic development specialist at um, Niraz International Consultant, uh, and she's working in Paris, France. So uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, please join me in extending a warm welcome to our special guest today, Nawal Alal. Madam, we are truly honored to have you here with us today, and I want to extend my warmest Thanks for joining us in the discussion today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for having me and, and for giving me the time to, to discuss that with you today. Um, so my name is Nawal Alal. Um, as mentioned, I specialized in um, women, economic em empowerment and access to finance, inclusive access to finance. Um, I'm based in Paris and work in Fourniras International Consulting, although I am Algerian by nationality, um, where I was born and raised, and I have worked in the international cooperation world uh, for the past 10 years or so. So very excited to be here. Thank you very much. And I thought we'll have a few guiding points, as you see on uh, on the screen shared with you. And the idea is to have more of a discussion rather than a lecture or, or anything like that. I am by no means a university professor and rather we share um, different cases or, uh, or experiences came across uh, in the past years working on the topic. Um, so um, we can definitely open uh, open the floor for for discussions or anything. But the main idea is that the session would have guiding points of why do we need to advocate for gender uh, equality and inclusive financing, um, and then we have few definition context and 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 why um, the financial inclusion is actually the main tool. In, in advancing such a cause. And then we dive into two concepts uh, us economists know very well, which is the supply and demand, and then have a few main takeaways and then useful links and tools that can be applied throughout various um, various projects or like line of works. Um, so uh, this is basically what would the session cover. Uh, I don't know if the preference is for me to present a few points and then we have discussions and, 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 and questions, or if you wanna dive right into it and then we use the slides rather uh, as, as a support behind. Um, so Namal, how would you prefer? Would you like to go by your presentations or I have some questions ready for you? Uh, which, which of the one uh, you will choose the first? <laughs> um, um, I'm happy to go 
to go to go either way. I think uh, when I prepared the slide, it was rather to have a guidance through uh, through what what we can expect and 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 what is needed and so um and so forth. So I think if uh, if you don't mind, I would still like to go through the slide, uh, especially uh, with the data given there. But it won't take more than ten minutes, and then we can dive into the different discussion points. I think uh, that that's a that's a really good idea. And um, okay. So we'll first have a little bit, you know, knowledge from you, and then you know we can get into the question and answers. Please let me know right. whenever you want me to change the slide. Super wonderful. Uh, is it possible to have them full screen? Uh, let me try. Um, It looks hard right now. Uh, um, yeah, at, at the bottom, there should be like a... How, how about now? Is it suitable? Um, no, it's not full screen, but I mean, we can we can do with that, I guess. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Yes, no please. worries at all. Um, yeah, thank you very much. So uh, I wanted to start with um, with a few data of, of, of why is it important to still care about um, gender lens financing and, and so on. And, and, and arguably, at least in my line of work, we always come across people that say, well, we have made a lot of advancement in, in, in the topic and, and there is no need to like focus on it and let's just have more of an approach that is like um, a transversal and so on. So I thought in line with these remarks that that at least I always get in, in my line of work, lucky if, 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 if others don't, um, I thought it is important to have access to, to data that prove that even though yes, we have made a lot of progress, there's still a lot to be done in, in, in various topics. Um, so I thought we'll start with these um, uh, and those those various points are the, um, are the one that impact women access to finance directly or indirectly. So, so when it comes to female agency, uh, still in 19 countries, are, there are still legal provision requiring a, marry, a married woman to, to obey her husband. That's by law. Uh, we still have 30 countries where women cannot be head of household the same way as men. Um, full, a funny story, when I was a kid and, and I was quite a, one of those like very troubled kids that get my parents to school every week or so because I would do something. And then a few times when when it will be my mom go go into school, the principal will ask, where's my dad? Why is it not my dad showing up? Or or like he should speak to my dad and and, and not to my mom. And which 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 almost like removed from her agency as my parent. And then my sole parent should be actually my dad, which um, was quite ridiculous. Um, in terms of like identification of, of, of possibilities, we still have 36 countries where it's more complicated for women to apply for a passport than it is for men. And, and I've put passport, but that apply also to different range of, 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 of ident identification documents. And sometimes women even, uh, even are asked to provide documentation or like written letters from their legal tutor and and i put quotes on that uh and that can be like the the husband the dad and so on um in terms of mobility again in in 16 countries women cannot travel outside their home the same way as men documentation might differ they might ask to get more justification document so on and so forth in terms of income and and that's actually quite quite an interesting one. We have less than half of the countries have legislation in mandate and equal remuneration for equal work. However, none of these countries have achieved equal remuneration for equal work. So even the ones that have legislation for it did not actually manage to get it work. And then 90 countries still have one restriction of jobs women can hold. Um, I say 90, but but these data, again, depend on on the national statistics and the national statistics in some cases are distorted a bit. So I would even argue that there are more. 
and and in terms of 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 entrepreneurship and and that's the most important because that's where women build their own businesses and and that's why i would say that's one of the main reasons why why women still have businesses in the informal sector is that in 12 countries women cannot sign a contract the same way men can and in 17 women cannot register a business the same way a man can. Out of these 17, in 10 countries, women cannot register a business at all. Um, and then when it comes to, to assets, in, in 19 countries, women don't have equal ownership rights to immovable property. Um, in five countries, still women cannot hold properties uh, on, on their name. And then we have 43 countries where sons and daughters don't have equal rights to inherit assets from, from their parents. Um, so that's why we still need to advocate for gender lens investing and why we're still lacking behind. Next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. So with, with all... The, the different difficulties listed listed before, which which impact the women economic empowerment overall, um, which is the process of, of granting women the different tools, resources, knowledge, and the opportunities to be a fully active economic actors in their societies. So when we talk about women economic empowerment, and I know we have like different different terms in in uh, in the past years. Let, let it be gender equality, gender lens investment, gender financing, and, and and women economic empowerment. So I thought about women economic empowerment to start with because I think it's it englobes nicely the different the different areas that that we should focus on and work so we have the first one being employability entrepreneurship and, and this is why we it's still important because we still have women that cannot register their businesses and so on in terms of education and training i would actually argue that this is the sector where we have made a lot of progress and most progress when it comes to to gender equality especially in primary education we have access to to technology which is also making quite a lot of progress in terms of gender property right we've seen that we're still we're still not there leadership and and decision making this is something that was tried to be solved through through quotas especially in 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 the western world but i think even that has has failed miserably because it's not merit based and then we have the legal and and, and policy reforms and and as we've seen earlier sometimes even when we have the policy in place there implementation is not is not there so it is it is quite hard um to still work on that and then we have the cultural and and social norms that that also impact that and last but not least and i've put one in there because that's the topic i really want to dive into today which is the financial inclusion and and i would argue that the financial inclusion actually englobe all the different points that that i have listed because we all know without collateral there's no way to have a loan and so on and so forth and and the financial education etc so diving into the financial inclusion next slide please thank you i thought like i put it i put it like that because i i would like to to argue about the fact that women economic empowerment is not only a gender equality issue it is an economic development issue because women represent half of the population in the world anyway and half of the countries so if you have half of your population that is not active that is not productive it's also a loss in terms of gdp it's a loss in terms of production and it's a loss in terms of everything really that that a country represents so being left out it is not just for gender equality it also there is a business case behind it and there is an economic case that that we we have here so um we have wee which which i use for women economic empowerment that sits right in in between both and i would even argue that it sits more on the economic development side and then i added also uh wfi which is women financial inclusion which is part of the financial inclusion overall because i think it will be foolish to, uh, to think that only women are excluded from from finances unfortunately we have a lot of 
uh, a lot of population still excluded, and that represent vulnerable population, the poor and 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 women, and and we should have like a whole financial inclusion for everyone. But we've seen in the past, and I think history taught us that when we have an global approach, it never serves women, and we need to have an adapted approach to women, hence financial inclusion and women financial inclusion being part of the economic development segment. Next slide, please. So here, and 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 um, and apologies for um uh for the different colors and 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 maybe it's it's also too small to be seen. But but the idea was that um women financial inclusion is also linked to the different um SDGs, for instance, that that we talk about a lot and and that we want to achieve by by twenty thirty. And and the idea was to move from the different financial tools that women should have access to and can have access to, um, and how they are used in terms of in terms of cases, for instance, is it about managing property? It, it is about protecting customers, is it about payment, is it about informing, is it about getting loans, is it about growth? And then all of these have like different different benefits and and the, and the benefit are linked to the different SDGs. And in terms of benefits, we have increased resilience, increased income, stronger social network, greater control and, and, and privacy, smoother consumption, improved access to services, less stress and, and increased security. And all those benefits listed are are actually one of the main targets or sub targets of the SDGs that we have here. Um, and we have reducing poverty, zero hunger, good health, quality education, gender equality, clean water and, and sanitation, affordable clean energy and sustainable cities and communities. So, so again, it's not just SDG five that is gender equality, but it does really impact every aspect that is considered part of the economic development. Next slide, please. I was just trying to maximize it. <laughs> sure. And certainly, okay, fine. Yeah. This one we can make smaller. So, um, so yeah, um, like having making the case for for women being a bankable community, being a business case and not necessarily just a gender equ equality one. I thought, let's just highlight why is it important for financial service providers to care about this, this segment that they did not necessarily target before. And, and we see like many banks that that just say oh yeah uh, like we have we have loans and and we have like financial products in place but then when you look at at their data women loans represent sometimes e even less than than five percent and and when asked it's like oh no they did not come up with the right id they did not have collaterals so on and so forth so yes financial products are there but they're not adapted to the needs and the realities yeah, as well it's not necessarily just yeah. needs but but realities. Um, so with that in mind, I thought I just put a few few points here. And the first one being that women represent almost a billion potential bank client, which is about 980 million women that do not have access to a bank account. Again, there is a business case for it because we know that financial service providers have also something with that, when they have bank accounts, when they have financial products and, and everything that goes with it. This, the second one is that women represent a trillion USD business opportunity for all insurance companies. And, uh, and that could go up to 1.7 trillion USD annual premiums for women by 2030. And again, these are data that, that were not constructed by, by NGOs or by gender equality product um, projects. These, this is data that was gathered by, I think it was, uh, uh, it was uh, banks in, in the US, but it was led by, by JP Morgan. 
uh, essentially. So if banks consider all of these gaps in terms of in terms of gender equality, and if banks understand that there is a business case for it, means that we need to act upon that. And then um, we have the fact that women own or operate around a third of the world businesses. And again, women own and lead almost 6.6 .6 million formal SMEs. And we all know that women businesses are, are, are about four fifths of informal. So if we have 6.6 .6 million of formal SMEs, imagine how much do we have in the informal sector in emerging markets. Again, this is not a, a study done by an NGO or anything, it was done by IFC. So we're talking numbers and we're talking business cases. Um, and then again, women have an unmet credit need um, because 68% of, of women businesses in developing economies have unmet credit needs. And there is a financial gap in women-led SMEs. There is estimated again, as we've seen before, at 1.7 trillion USD. And then women are reliable borrowers. It, it has been proven that women are way more reliable than men when it comes to borrowing and when it comes to having access to financial product. Why? Because they are more thorough and they never actually ask for a loan if they are not sure 100% that they can actually reimburse. Uh, so, and, and with that in mind, um, so out of all the non-performing loans, women-led SMEs was 3% compared to the 4.9 total, which leads also to the calculation that men non-performing loans exceeded 6%, which is almost double than women. So again, women are more reliable borrowers than men. Next slide, please. So again, with all of these, um, with all of these different um, different cases of why women should have more access to finance and and why they are better borrowers and and the whole data behind it, so we dive into now like why should financial products be adapted to that and and how do we adapt it to that? So all these financial service providers will need at first, obviously, which is which is normal in any new approach to have a quantitative and qualitative research. And the quantitative one could be, could be translated into six disaggregated portfolio data because the banks th that do not collect this type of disaggregation would never know how many of their clients are men, how many are women, why didn't they give the loans and the ones that did not perform, so on and so forth. So it is of paramount importance to have sex disaggregated data. Um, to be able to identify behavioral differences, analysis of the gender needs, um, et cetera. And then having some sort of a more qualitative approach where we have more interviews, focus groups, and so on to understand what is it that women expect from financial service providers to have and what type of adapting products do they need. So uh, FSPs then take all those findings to assess their business model and, and to evaluate the different components. And, and the graphic here, for instance, shows like areas that need to be assessed before having products adapted to women. Again, it's not just the case of, of just saying, let's do products adapted to women, but it also has to go through the different governance, internal activities, so on and so forth. So, so we need to have an internal gender that diversity and, and that include board level, leadership team, management, et cetera, communication and customer touch points. It is important. And, and we've seen as well from different surveys that women like the personal contact with the different bank providers because that create also some sort of a trust in between both and then have a credit policy and an appraisal process. In some instances, when financial products are not adapted, they end up also being harmful. So it is important to, to look into that and, uh, and to look again into the different product terms. What is it that we have? How do they achieve gender equality and so on? And then in-house capacity, obviously staff need to be trained to this different gender focused practices and how is that different? And then obviously the frontline delivery model. So these are the different types of, of integration that we can think of. Next slide, please. 
Thank you. And then also, like in this case, I tried to like summarize the different um, the different intervention ideas for these financial providers, and and how will that differ, and why is it important to adapt these points to be able to have products that go uh, more in line with women economic empowerment and with women access to finance. So the first one being to promote a friendlier environment for for women customer, and for this we need to train staff in terms of how to engage with with women entrepreneurs and why gender neutral banking does not work uh, because it rarely serves women. And then um, hiring and training more female relationship managers and having digital channels, which should be explored in terms of increased distribution beyond branches. In some cases we have, for instance, especially in Southern African countries, women do not have bank accounts and the first reason of that being that they cannot travel to a bank branch because they are they are too far and, uh, and and they need to travel long, which also involves safety, so on and so forth. So digital products also sometimes are the solution for certain constraint. And then um, we have customized policy processes system to align female entrepreneur needs, and for that we need to have a simplified approval process, explore options on psychological or alternative collaterals, and then simplify the KYC, which is know your customer requirements as far as legally possible. Obviously, we still need to identify the people, so on and so forth. Um, actively address women, again, simplify the type of identification. Some women do not have what we consider as, as formal ID, but they might be able to provide something different. Uh, and then reducing reliance on collateral in uh, in the lending, collateral provision being the main constraint for women not accessing loans, and also adapt marketing strategies because it needs to be targeted and it, it needs to um, to also be understood in this way. And then also with the financial products, it is important to also have non-financial products which will enhance financial literacy, like training women on, on available products, provide exposure and, and networking opportunities. Sometimes it is, e uh, it is easier to, to discuss among entrepreneurs and, and why is it that it is important to have financial products and then ensure access to consultancy services. Next slide, please. And so I guess to to also wrap it up, uh, I wanted to to highlight uh, that women economic empowerment and women financial inclusion go beyond gender equality, and 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 it is also a key aspect in achieving poverty reduction. Again, women represent half of the population, so their inclusion also means reducing poverty. And we have economic growth, uh, which incorporate women to contribute to the overall economic growth and development as they represent again a, a significant portion of, of the population. Household welfare, financially included women always uh, can better provide for their family welfare, including in terms of education, healthcare, nutrition, and then resilience. And, and I guess resilience also, especially in times of, of post-COVID, where we realize that, that women were the ones that were Im impacted most by COVID because they are the ones that had to care for their children, household, and so on. And then obviously access to financial services help them build savings, make them more resilient to economic shocks and, and disasters. And next and last slide, please. I guess I just wanted for this one, I really just wanted to provide like useful tools and links that can be explored beyond these this this presentation again the, the presentation by no mean has like an overall approach or or explore the different the different systems and, and it's more of some sort of introductory to to why there is there and, and i think it will be good to like explore it further via those those different links or even also reaching out to me if you feel like it would be happy to help so thank you very much that was my presentation. So happy for questions and discussion. Um, thank you, Naval. Uh, since uh, this webinar was scheduled only for uh, 40 minutes, so we, we don't have much time for the discussion left. But uh, yes, your presentation was really insightful. 
and i think more or less it covered all of the questions that i had in my line and the way you presented it with the figures and facts and everything like that so it was really inspiring uh, we do have one question over here which is how we can increase financial inclusion in general especially women and i think uh, you have given a lot of interventions which can help in uh, answering to this question and um, for more uh, information on that i can share these slides or the email of uh, madam nawal as well with you so anybody who wants to connect with um, nawal alan please let me know you can write an email to me and i can um, help you bridge the contact with uh, nawal okay so i think um, that's all for today we don't have much questions uh, actually we do have questions 